complex thanks to the taxonomy system, especially considering the high buy pressure that we had. We had multiple million dollars, you know, day after day after day after day. Um, we have a lot of uh, liquidity right now. It dipped, of course, because of, you know, um, the price decline that we had. Uh, we set it up over $4 million investment treasury. I will speak about the investment treasury a bit and how, you know, uh, things are working out currently quite well. Uh, we set it over $4.7 million on the RFV treasury. We are currently working on a strategy uh, to increase the RFV treasury uh, in the meantime. So we have even more money on that stable asset. And of course, you know, liquidity was sitting there. Our burns are helping <laughs> thanks to the sub pressure that happened, even though I know, uh, you know, um, it isn't the best thing one may wish, but at least to make everyone happy in a sense, who, who is a long term believer is that now our dead wallet is on the top 10 wallet. Uh, he grew quite significantly. I'm going to be talking about how that dead wallet is actually taking pressure off the APY even more. And yeah, so uh, please take a look at the uh, treasury investment picture. So first of all, I would like to talk about the APY. The APY, of course, you know, uh, is sitting at 99,100%. And if you break it down, it's like 0.4% every rebase and 1.91% per day. As we stand right now, we did actually fulfill that promise and we had that APY, of course, in a sense that we had, you know, all these investment strategies and stuff coming on forward and, you know, everyone received their, their tokens. Now the idea is and why we are saying we want to transition slowly into a more sustainable model is that you have to keep in mind that the APY is based on how much the protocol can grow over time, right? That is very, very important. If you start with a million dollar market cap, uh, 10x to 10 million is a thousand percent that is sustainable if you print out the tokens during that time if you pr print out a mil uh, you know a thousand percent apy in that sense you know every token is keeping the same price this is sustainable but what happens if you are over a hundred million dollar market cap what if you're over 200 million dollar market cap what if you're over a billion dollar market cap and yes our team is still working to hit that billion dollar market cap nonetheless of course <laughs> a lot of people you know don't believe us in that sense. Um, so yeah, no, we are still going for the billion dollar market cap. We are not moving, we are working, V2 is being worked on. We have multiple devs look at the V2 contract uh, for the betterment of the protocol, of course. So what actually happened, uh, the sell decline or, or the sell pressure, what caused the panic saw yesterday is um, a, a few things. So we had a huge, huge buy pressure over the last days. And that is why, you know, I announced publicly multiple times that we are working on sustaining the APY, uh, the, the buy pressure by having multiple sales through the contract so the price doesn't go up too hard. But um, after the AMA and after the video and stuff like that, we had an accumulated amount of, you know, buy and uh, buy pressure of over 20, 30 million dollars. So, you know, even if we have multiple, multiple, multiple sales from the contract, it didn't, you know, keep up with the massive buy pressure now of course um what happened now is when you know the protocol calmed down and i'm very very sorry for that um what happened then is a few sales happened you know a few bigger sales happened shortly before the 11 cent mark and that filled the treasury to the brim right and then the treasury had its execution that once it hits enough you know enough tokens in its protocol in, in, in the contract itself, it starts selling the sphere that it accumulated from the cells, right? When you do a sell, you you give a chunk of your sphere. So let's say you have a hundred dollar buy, right? And one sphere is one dollar. You buy a hundred dollars, you know, worth of sphere. You actually receive eighty-seven sphere. Thirteen sphere goes to the contract, and at the same time, the contract, you know, accumulates that amount of sphere. And at one point, once the threshold is hit. The contract, you know, converts that sphere to my, to liquidity, to WMatic, all that stuff. So what happened yesterday is we were sitting at a 
very very fickle point so to speak where you know we were hitting i think 11 cents we hit 11 cents we you know we had this high buy and sell pressure at 11 cents then it went down a little bit because big sales happened and then the contract since it accumulated thanks to the massive buy and sell pressure that happened during that you know squeeze the treasury then sold as well and what caused because the treasury was accumulating so many tokens the sell was then a bit bigger right and that is what actually caused the sell pressure and i'm very very sorry that uh we didn't uh, act faster upon that i i totally agree that uh, this is something we should have learned from now coming forward and we have actually adjusted the contract now uh over the past days uh you know over the past hours to actually adjust to the sell on buy pressure to not affect the protocol as much we actually didn't enable the sell pressure or the buy pressure over uh, the, the sorry the sell pressure of the contract over the past day since uh the the situation happened and now the contract accumulated a lot of tokens and we we had to extract a lot of tokens out of the contract and of course because of the massive sell pressure then that happened again uh, the contract accumulated roughly 3.2 million tokens and as soon as a bit of buy pressure happened with sell pressure again the contract sold again and that caused the second uh, issue now we have adjusted the contract to actually sell and buy more frequently and that basically means when the threshold is hit faster the contract was a bit more and therefore not cause massive price dumps we had to make it a bit higher before because the amount of buy pressure that happened we wanted to have rather you know rather than going it you know going straight sideways we wanted the contract you know to cause dumps by accumulating way more tokens right that is what we did and um now that we had you know the sell pressure happen upon us uh, it ha you know it backfired in that sense and we are very very sorry for what happened there and we are going to be sitting way more active on how to actually adjust uh, the sell and buy pressure from the contract coming forward. It's a double-edged sword. So, um, yeah, the taxonomy system is very, very good to garner liquidity, but when there is, you know, high buy pressure, uh, the, the contract actually aids to that buy pressure. When there is, you know, uh, sorry, when there's high sell pressure, the contract aids because, you know, the contract is selling the sphere for more uh, 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 liquidity to store it in the RFV treasury and the investment treasury uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, that is what happened in the past uh, day. Why the price, you know, had this massive dump is because of high, high, you know, retracement in that sense. Then the treasury, of course, selling as well. And uh, yes, that was, that is sadly what caused uh, this fickle situation. We are adjusting that. We are looking at the contract and we are going to keep, you know, staying and, and working towards the contract's adjustments. We have made it that now at roughly 30 to 320 or wait, moment, one sec. We are adjusting the numbers <laughs> the entire time to adjust to the RV. And um, yeah, so I'm working with Equinox. I hope Equinox is here. Shout out to you. He's working with me on this. At first we had the threshold of 3 million and that is when the 100K uh, happened. Now we have set it down to uh, 32,000 so that basically means ten thousand dollars of sales instead of having that massive buy uh, sell pressure and yeah now i want to address uh the elephant in the room and i know why all of you are here is the apy right are you guys changing the apy is the apy going down why why are you advising the apy going down what is the apy and i want to explain to you guys one thing the APY isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Thanks to the, like I said, the taxonomy system, we can actually sustain the APY in a longer fashion. But what we wanted to convey to you, the community, is that we don't believe that the APY is something you should be investing for. Of course, you're getting these dividends, but you have to make, you have to understand one thing is that the APY is only feasible when you have enough money coming into the protocol. And that is why we are arranging the entire protocol to actually help that APY to become sustainable. And uh, just an exa example, right? When you have inflation and you don't have money to back it up, right? What happens is that you have 1,000 tokens worth one, you know, each $1. So you have made a $1,000 investment. So you have that. But if the market cap and if there's no investment strategies done with that money that you actually sold to the, what's the protocol, 
then let's say for, for simplicity's sake, it's 100% APY. In one year coming forward, you won't have made money, more money, but you have made more tokens. So you had, you know, 1,000 uh, tokens worth $1 equaling, you know, $1,000 investment. You would now have 2,000 tokens worth 50 cents. So you haven't actually made money. Now, the issue with that inflation, of course, comes um, that hypothetically everyone is making more money, but only the first one to sell actually made that money and everyone else is carrying the bag. But if you have a more you know, split even APY, so everyone actually is being supported by the protocol, then everyone makes money. And that is what we are working towards. We don't want, you know, early, early investors only to make money. We want each and every one of you guys to actually make money, right? So yeah, let's look at the picture here. And for you to understand the grand vision and why we are going to be the only ones around in the coming future uh, with an APY that is feasible and backed by a treasury. Because you can ask every protocol out there, how do you actually back up the APY, right? You have to make money from somewhere and not only from investors buying in. Because that is, you know, no different from a Ponzi. What you want to make sure is, you know, early investors and the last investor gets paid. So if you look at the picture, you have that big button called Treasury Investments. So what we have unveiled in the last AMA, and I have to re uh, talk about this is basically we are building infrastructure within the Polygon ecosystem that actually brings the money towards us. And I want to go more in depth about that. Basically, you see here in the middle, treasury investments and all the profit returns to Sphere. So what we did is we built Tattoo's uh, quantum liquidity as a service in a bigger fashion. We are talking with over a hundred projects that want to utilize quantum liquidity as a service. To explain it more, once more in depth is Basically, quantum liquidity as a service is a product that is not on the market. No one has this. So what that means is that Sphere has a product that everyone wants, but no one actually has. That basically means that everyone is going to utilize quantum liquidity as a service. Now, of course, why did no one do this? Because it's too complicated. You know, Tattoo has been helped by... Um, Polygon actually, you know, to build this because to build such a complex strategy is way over most developers head. We have in Tattoo, we have God in Making, we have uh, Balbex, very, very, very bright, bright minds and, you know, the backbones of, of Tattoo and all the entire team that are working, that are seasoned devs, you know, devs that are not just forking code, but actually building their own code. If you look at the code of Tattoo, it's out of this world. Like I'm a dev myself and I have mad respect to each and every dev there at Tattoo. And that basically also explains why uh, quantum liquidity as a service is so powerful because no one else can, you know, rebuild it. And let's go and say basically, okay, someone did. Someone rebuilt quantum liquidity as a service. Now the issue is you can fork the code, but the bigger problem is how can you actually, you know, make this a feasible strategy and this is where spheres investments comes into place hi matthew <laughs> a lot of people are listening <laughs> um, hey brother i'm just listening in sorry yeah, man. <laughs> happy Easter to each and everyone hope you had some you know blessed time with our family so yeah now so what are we doing here is with the treasury investments right we have quantum liquidity as a service so we are actually building a product that is not on the market and therefore having a guaranteed revenue stream how does quantum liquidity as a service work is basically each and every protocol wants to make money, right? To pay out their investors. Now, the biggest issue, and if you look at our server right on the right, you can see that our RFV is like at 4.7 million. You see uh, the treasury investment balance is <laughs> wrong, but roughly about, around 4.3 million, I think D-Bank is uh, bugging where we are getting the, the uh, numbers from. Let me see if I can refresh the bot. Maybe it gets the proper number. But basically, it's also hovering around four. Yeah, now you see four point five million dollars. So it's basically nine nine point one million dollars right now that are you know in RFV and in the investment treasury. Now you can also see that the liquidity pool is sitting at a whopping nine nine million dollars. So the issue is most protocols don't make anything with that nine million dollars, and we are actually offering a service to this protocol saying, hey, your liquidity pool, we are going to make money with that for you. So basically half the protocol's earnings that was stagnant is going to be utilized 
buy our product to actually make them more money. Now we are sitting here, and I talked about this before in the very second AMA. Matthew, you remember, <laughs> we were in the House of Obsidian there. Very, very lovely. Um, yep, well, love we having you there. I appreciate it. Soon, soon we will have a third one, maybe. <laughs> after the You know we will. <laughs> 100%. So what we talked about is basically we expect a revenue stream once we go more permissionless with our quantum liquidity as a service. And I can guarantee, and you can go to every project and ask them about quantum liquidity as a service and why each and every project is saying we are using quantum liquidity as a service is because it's a no-brainer. And we expect a revenue stream of the, you know, of the fees that happen with the DEX uh, of $18 million towards, you know, tattoos, uh, shareholders, and that is in majority sphere. So that is one revenue stream that no one else has, and it's, you know, solely for sphere. Nothing, you know, no one else has it, and most likely no one else will have it. It's going to be a sphere project, a sphere product, right? So that is one thing you have to keep in mind. And that is what I say, why I say, you know, the APY has to be backed by something. It has to be backed by actual money being made, right? Otherwise, like I said, you have 1,000 tokens worth $1. And if the APY keeps compounding, that is cool and dandy, you will have more tokens. But in one year, you will have uh, 2,000 tokens worth 50 cents if the APY is 100%. Now imagine the APY is at 1,000% or 100,000%. If there is no money coming into the protocol, the APY means nothing. So that is why we are saying, okay, we want to appreciate uh, uh, the APY by having it actually backed by something. Now, quantum liquidity as a service is already deployed and is already being used by, for example, Oraclam and on TattooSwap. If you have more questions, you can, of course, ask TattooSwap on that uh, or Tattoo in general. Now we have uh, our two other projects. We have Dystopia and Penrose. And to reiterate on that, Dystopia is not only a DEX. Dystopia is going to have Terra Luna's UST coming to Polygon. So you have to imagine Terra Luna, right? The, the blockchain is just deployed recently on Avalanche, and you have, could have seen, if you look on DeFi Llama, what a massive spike Aval Avalanche, sorry, Avalanche had, right, over the time. Frax is coming, and Chidao is coming. If you look at these different projects, Terra Luna is a multi billion dollar market cap project, and they're working with us to deploy a DEX on Polygon. This is unreal. And we just launched, like we are a month old project and we are working with the likes of Terra Luna, Frax. Frax is a two, I think, or three billion dollar project. Chidao is half a billion dollar project and they're willing to work with us. We are not just a pump and dump project. We have the biggest players in the space already working with us on your products. Now, of course, how does this translate into APY? How does this translate into money coming into the project? And this is where the where, where the concern was, right? With V2, is there, you know, is the APY going down to 10%, 100%? No, no. Thank God we have the sustainability. We had this massive rally. We had this massive buy. We had this massive sells that actually helped the protocol. Now we had a massive, massive sell that actually aided, aided very, very hard to the APY because we had so many cells, the dead wallet, and this is the only project that actually utilizes a truly dead wallet. So the to tokens are truly out of circulation, never to be seen again in the hands of anyone. Right now it's sitting comfortably at the at eighth. It was at the ninth, now it's at the eighth spot. It's growing massively. It's basically, you know, only a few, few different uh, uh, accounts, uh, wallets, whatever, are above that. And it's ever expanding and it helps with the investments because when you buy and sell and a lot of people sadly sold at a loss and self hodling, um, they aided the, of course, the deflationary nature of Sphere. So we are already having, I think like three or 4% of the circulating supply going into the debt wallet forever and helping the protocol sustain itself long term one thing i will create a, a small channel now i don't want to have the spam in the main chat and i want you guys to be able to talk there um and you know i don't want you guys to just listen but also you know voice your uh, concerns i will talk about them as soon um you know after i finish my talks i will pick up a few questions and then you know uh uh, uh yeah 
sorry i'm also you know <laughs> i'm uh, also kind of uh hyped a bit and yeah <laughs> has also been a, a rough day for me uh but yeah no worries i will make it for the true experience please verify your own account to be able to talk um i'm moving it above the main chat right um and i'm very very sorry to each and everyone um about the ama because a lot of you are expecting more and we are working on having the next and upcoming amas uh, more and more professional we are moving a bit more from the dj side of ways where you know we all have fun and are cozy and laughing together to a, a way where we are going to have a pro presentation uh, visual presentations and stuff like that going to be very very professional coming forward it's actually how i prefer to do that but um yeah we were trying to cater to, to 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 the community in that sense and i'm very very sorry to each and everyone who felt like okay they were disappointed in that anyhow so let's go back now we have talked about dystopia right terra luna is coming um let me look at terra luna and how big they are just to put this into perspective how big that chain is actually and what that means for polygon and what it means for dystopia what that means for penrose and what that ultimately and most importantly for you guys right now is what it means for sphere right so terra luna is a big pretty big project with over 27 billion dollars in tvl then we have frax i'm gonna look now how big frax is frax is pretty pretty big to say the least uh frax is the 14th biggest DeFi protocol with over four billion dollars right so it's not it's not something small like we, we, are, we are talking about big projects here now we have chidao almost 400 million dollar tvl sitting at you know we have three top 100 DeFi projects already coming into uh, dystopia now how does dystopia work basically it's similarly to curve and convex where all these projects all these stable coins ust is you know one ust equals one dollar right so how does that protocol sustain that one ust uh that that one dollar peg they need deep deep liquidity so when buys and sells happen the price doesn't go up and down so you can see for example a volatile project like sphere <coughs> goes up in the price and goes down in the price like there's no tomorrow but for a stable coin you can't have that and thanks to dystopia we are going to be providing deep 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 very deep liquidity in the polygon ecosystem and that's how stable coins can thrive uh, on polygon so of course you know we are going to be partaking in dystopia we are talking with the dystopia team to actually be being the ones who provide uh, the liquidity um of course there's terra luna frax and chidao who are, going, who are going to provide a lot a lot a lot of liquidity towards dystopia i personally expect that um Dystopia is going to be hitting, you know, a hundred million dollar TVL easily. Penrose is now something that we call an aggregator. What is an aggregator? Basically, what an aggregator is means instead of you, the retail investor, or you know, the normal projects, go to Dystopia and lock yourself for four years. You can come to Penrose and lock yourself for sixteen weeks instead, and have the same benefits as if you were locking in for four years dystopia is providing the liquidity but penrose dictates how the dystopian liquidity goes so we are building with the sphere team well not us directly the sphere team but we are working with another team to build penrose penrose is going to be deployed by the sphere team and we are working with dystopia and in hindsight with terra luna in hindsight with frax with chidao with polygon themselves on actually building Penrose, right? So how does that benefit the Sphere Treasury? Now we have roughly, and what we are changing is we te technically have a 20% shareholding of Penrose's entire supply. Now what we are doing, we said, okay, we're taking 18% and 2% is going to be provisioned for liquidity. Because when we provision liquidity at the beginning, it means more, way more investors are going to come into Penrose and are going to, you know, farm on Penrose to, you know, provide the stupid liquidity. So we are going to have massive fees coming in and out. And that is, of course, also coming into Sphere's Treasury. And I have to reiterate here, guys. You have to understand, and please look at the pictures. You can go to a project and ask them, 
how are you actually trying to sustain the last investor coming into the project, right? Because as it works right now, uh, early investors are inside and to make actually money, last new investors need to come in to pay off the old investors, correct? But with this, we are building a, a massive, massive, massive treasury that is actually going to be able to pay itself off. And this is why the APY is so important is to have a treasury that is actually able to pay off even the newest investors, not only the old ones, because we don't want to recycle new investors' money for old investors. This is what you would call a Ponzi, right? Um, what we want to create is technically the reverse version of a Ponzi. We want to make sure that even the last investor is going to make money off the new invest. Uh, sorry, the new investors make money off the old investors. How does that work? Old investors are going to be paying, you know, the taxes and are going to leave a, a considerable bag for the new investor to actually, you know, have that bag used to actually make more money. And this is what we are building, for example, Dystopia and Penrose. Dystopia and Penrose, and what I can say now is, are only two projects out of at least three more projects. I think I can say that. There are going to be three more projects on the same caliber that are going to come, that are also going to be working with, you know, big shots, uh, and that are going to be aiding the sphere treasury where we're going to be having seed investments uh, unforeseen before, right? So this is very, very important for you to understand. One more thing. So how, how, does, how do we actually create this flywheel effect where more money comes in? So basically, we are not only building projects that, you know, uh, pay each other, right? So um, let's say Penrose is bringing money into Sphere, Dystopia is bringing money into Sphere, Tetra is bringing money into Sphere, Quantum Liquidity is bringing money into Sphere. No, we are taking this to another level. What we say is we are building actually Legos an entirely big ecosystem and i would like to talk about the three other items but i'm sitting on an nda but basically the next three items that we are building on this lego are going to be also supporting all the other projects so penrose is going to be benefiting from tattoo tattoo is going to be benefiting from penrose dystopia is going to be of course benefiting from penrose and penrose is going to be benefiting from dystopia therefore creating a, a, a positive flywheel where every project is going to be making more money off each other now we're going to have all these big players, Terra Luna, Frax, Chidao coming into the play. We're also going to be provisioning liquidity to make sure their protocol has deep liquidity. And for that, they're going to be paying hefty amounts of money or hefty amounts of liquidity, right? Now, quantum liquidity as a service is uh, what I can say with certainty is we are. this is not the only way we're going to be utilizing that revolutionary. And you can, you know, I don't know <laughs> how hard I can, um, you know, underscore this quantum liquidity as a service is not only something that we can use for the LP. That is what I can say. There's so many ways to apply this that you will, you know, your mind is going to be blown in the coming future. But basically quantum liquidity as a service is a, an item that we can use for many, many more protocols that we are currently building upon. So that is going to, you know, be an engine, underlying engine to actually thrive more liquidity. And now what happens is, thanks to all that money coming to Sphere's treasury, we can actually take a chunk of that, you know, let's say the APY keeps going forward and there's a sell, sell event happening, we are actually not having only a stagnant assets or a, a treasury that is doing nothing, but actually money that is being made. And the most important part is we are not taking money from the treasury, but we are actually taking profits for, off the treasury to pay out. So we don't, let's say we are sitting at a 4 million treasury, right? We want to make the treasury make 4.2 million. Then we can actually take 100,000 and let's say sell, buy tokens and burn them. And $100,000 profits for the treasury to keep working forward to make more money for you guys. So that is the important thing. Now, of course, uh, why did we say the APY is going to lower? You have to keep in mind, we are sitting, let's say we sit at a million dollar market cap right? A hundred percent APY would basically mean we need to be at $2 million market cap to actually be profitable. If we say we have a thousand percent APY, that basically means we need a 10x from 1 million to 10 million to make sure the price is the same and everyone profits. If we want to have a hundred thousand percent APY, you need a thousand X. So from a million dollar market cap to a billion dollar market cap to say, okay, the protocol, you know, made the money. Now, thanks to the taxonomy system, 
uh, it's it's a bit more complicated and a bit more easy to say, okay, we don't need to hit a billion because buys and sells actually take money from the investors that we can work with. And let's say to make the APY sustainable, we don't need to have the thousand percent APY going, you know, from one billion uh, from one million to you know. Uh, 10 million but let's say to 8.5 but because of the taxes that we have you know the money stays in the protocol and therefore we don't actually emit as many tokens as you may think at the beginning um if you suddenly you know you don't hear something you can just uh, rejoin and see um and join again right uh oh. because we have like almost 2000 users Hey Sim, can I uh, can I ask uh, uh, also say something about it? Of course, DVK. Um, so yeah, for people who don't know, I'm uh, DVK doing the core manager. Normally, I'm uh, behind the scenes. Um, so yeah, but also it's a part of my job to taking care of, yeah, sometimes difficult situations. But uh, yeah, I just want to say also some things that I have in my mind. You know, the problem I think yesterday also was. You know, Sim is on a very, very high level. So um, the problem about it is that sometimes when he speaks, even for our team members uh, who are not working as a dev, of course, it's sometimes hard to understand and to follow him because uh, it's so into deep. Um, and that's basically sometimes a problem why people are uh, in an AMA and just hear some words that hear like, you know, that, that, that sounds like very awful when we say, yeah, we want to lower the APY. But um, that's not the fact. I think to say it like in easy words, why it's very, why the APY is not that important in the project is because if you have a high APY and you want to hold it like on 100,000%, um, you will have like immediately in a short time a high inflation. Um, so what we, what we said yesterday was actually like a very good thing. Like we have like a lot of um, projects that bring to just say it very simple and easy, a lot of money because we're working with all different products together in beer. So that means the price rises. What uh, brings the most money, of course, when also the price rises. If you just have um, a, a, a fixed APY and that's the only thing where you sit on, then you have like all these own forks and other projects, DAOs and whatever, crashing at one point because it's not sustainable. So that's like to say it in an easy word. But what the people yesterday hear was because they're not into deep, into crypto. Oh, the APY is going low. It's, it's like you know lowering. Oh shit, I have to get out. But that's not the that's not the important point. So that's why I'm just you know try to say something also to like to make it more understandable for like people who are not so into deep. So forget about the APY. What we are doing right now is like we making like a huge project of Sphere and trying to be there for the next years and not, you know, for at least less than one year and dumb down. And at least it was just a Ponzi scheme. That's not what we want. We want to be there for a long run. We want to create something with, with the money. And of course, we also have to do those strategies because if we don't do, um, where does the money come from? If not like, is, you know, if, if the money just comes like from people who invest, on one point, it will stop, and then the whole system breaks together. So, of course, we have to do something to work with that money to give a sustainable, uh, uh, like a, like like a yeah, like a like a stable APY, um, and make things sure working out. So that's the that's the easiest way to say it because, um, you know, you know, him also knows I love him, but I also told him like after the AMA yesterday, oh man, that was way too hard to understand that's 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 like i know he's into it you know if you if you are working in a job and you talk to who don't understand anything about it you sound like a like a geek right because you know things other people don't know if you don't know anything about cars and you know a mechanic is talking to you you will don't understand if you don't have something to do with the cars same with sim so he's doing like a great job like if you ask me like one of the best on this defi market but if you don't understand you maybe you know become afraid i also hear some people saying yeah they're just talking and you know nothing um nothing uh, nothing happened and i was like what did the people even understand what yesterday happened we announced something very very great for the future and the people saying yeah we're just talking no we were not just talking maybe it was a problem because a lot of people were not understand and just here oh lowering the apy that's not the point forget about the apy i'm telling you you have projects um they're like way more interesting even when they have the lower apy
like one thing I want to say, and uh, I will go f uh, back the word to uh, to Sam. You want to say more thing because you just cut down? No, I just uh, yeah, that this was like basically the thing I just want to say. Uh, there are also like other questions, but maybe we do it when the people ask. I also just want to say one thing about the 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 KYC thing, right? This is also like I mean we're talking now about the APY, but just I want to say this because yesterday I saw that many times. Yeah, like, yeah. you have very very what people say. Oh, say oh sorry 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 yeah I'm sitting in a car right now. Uh, give me a second. It was an impromptu AMA, so <laughs> please forgive. Yes. It's Easter. People uh, are celebrating. Okay, I will. Is it better when I take my phone far away? I think so. For me, it's fine, but people said you're a fair lot. So, okay. All right, I will try. I put my phone here. So, maybe, yeah, just sitting in a car and, uh, yeah. Um, I hope it's okay. So, if you don't, uh, just say it. Uh, there, there's also like one thing I want to, to say about the KYC, okay? Because a lot of people were saying, yeah, you know, uh, the team is not doxxed. The team is not doxxed. And, you know, this is afraid. And people were afraid of rug pulling. And for us as people, you know, like, working on sphere we like you know we honest we have to understand some people don't know how things work out or what things are meaning but th let me just say one thing and we also uh will create a channel about it so uh all the people who have questions about it will get some information about the basic things because just today we find out that that mess but um you know the kyc thing people said that yeah you're just kyc by the obsidian but that means nothing and that's actually not true why we are not doxxed they let me tell this first it's very one simple sec, one sec one sec we are yeah. not only KYC by Obsidian, we are also KYC by Certic. So if you believe in the audit of Certic and that they have a legitimate space, you know, room in this space, and you say Certic is a valid company to do the audit with, we are actually KYC by them as well. So it's not just by Obsidian, we are double KYC and we are double audited. We take security higher than 99.99% of the other projects. Sorry, keep going, DVK. Yeah, just want to tell you because I just want to understand the people what that means basically. Why we are not dogs? That's very simple because right now we are living in a world where you know uh, the rules for crypto are fluctuating every day. You know, it could be possible that tomorrow in our country or whatever where we're staying, uh, the the um, vertical you know space like vertical in the, in the crypto is uh, not allowed anymore. So to protect ourselves, that's the that's the only way we say okay, we don't want to be doxxed because we just want to protect ourselves about the governments. Uh, if they make new rules, maybe, you know, we get some trouble. So that's, that's, that's how we have to find out all the future, how things are working with the government together. We are also willing to work with governments together in the future. That's of course, but we have to be careful. But what that means that we are KYC, then it's, it's even the same level as DOCS is because like uh, some said, we also uh, KYC to, with other uh, institutions, but I just want to tell about uh, Obsidian, why it's also important, you know, Obsidian make the KYC with us. That means they have our passports, uh, like copy of our passports, um, you know, video material and stuff. So uh, they have everything about addresses and so on. And so, on. so um, if we make, you know, some stupid things, for example, we, I don't know, take the cash and run away. That's the most stupid things we could do. Of course, you can say now, yeah, but why should we trust that the Obsidian Council will give their names? Of course, it's very simple because Jesse, for example, he is doxxed. He's a you know a person. He sticks together also uh, together also with the Obsidian Council. And the first thing uh, a government, uh, I don't know, a lawyer would do is like go to them and say, give us the documents because you'll already uh, make commercial with that service that you offer it. So you know you told everyone you have the data, so you're responsible for that. So you don't have to be afraid that anything could you know, happen because the people from Obsidian are also doxxed. They will never do any stupid thing and not give any data or something. So just let us please, please, please leave this behind because you don't have to be afraid of like forever. <laughs> this, 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 this thing is done. And I read it like almost like, you know, a lot of times. So like I said, we will also announce this, like we will make another channel for that so people can read about it. Uh, what they... you. Yeah. An FIQ channel. We're going to make an FIQ channel. Uh, anyhow, thank you, DVK. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to say something on that, Sim? Yeah. Sure, Matthew. So if you're listening and you don't know who I am, because I am not on the Sphere team, uh, my name is Matthew Walker. I'm doxxed, and I am one of the founding members of the Obsidian Council and verified by Obsidian. That process, I mean, I, I know Sam's real name. I have his 
do government documents on file. We have his street address. Um, there is, yeah, I mean, there is nothing that you could do illegally in regards of theft. That's what KYC is. And, and DVK just went into that. But yep, as someone that's not on your team that is in possession of your guys' government documents, you're all squared away. Um, and I just wanted to say one other thing before I go celebrate Easter with my family. I just jumped up here because wanted to see what all the, the commotion was about, hear, hear what you guys are talking about. Just as someone who is unassociated from the team, um, I have no, yeah, I'm not on the team at all. I met Sim when you guys started launching Sphere and we first started talking with you because I'm from Obsidian. As someone who is holding like a pretty significant bag in this moment, I will say firsthand experience as an investor, it's so easy to look at a chart and to freak out and react emotionally. And I just want to encourage people, whether, whether you buy or sell or whatever, make sure that you're taking the time to not uh, just panic sell. I have temporarily, and I believe this is temporary, I have not let go of a dime of my sphere holdings, but I've temporarily lost more in the last weekend than my annual income. Um, but I'm not letting go of a penny because I believe in what Sphere is creating, and I believe in the product that you guys are building. I believe in the team that is here, and I think that this is a temporary dip. And so if you really believe like, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to sell, work through that, process that. Um, if you are having a hard time because it's an emotional moment, take a step back, take a deep breath, go have dinner with your family, Don't and make a logical, sound decision. It is so easy to make emotionally based decisions in a space where it feels like everything is happening so quickly. But I just want to encourage you, don't, don't make a decision that you're going to beat yourself, beat yourself up over in, in a week when something changes. Or if you really feel like this is the time that you need to sell, make that decision based on logic and reason, not based on emotion, not based on fear, not based on um, the fear of, oh my gosh, what if it goes down another cent? What if it goes down? What if it, you know, like... Sorry, I'm breathing a little bit heavy because I'm outside uh, getting ready for an Easter egg hunt with the kids, um, touching some grass out here. But I just wanted to jump in and encourage you guys, make sound decisions, make wise decisions. So, yep, just as another investor, I'm not on this team. I'm just a, I am a, a friend of the Spherians. So I believe in you guys. I'm going to still listen to you as I'm doing stuff, but I'm going to hop off the stage. Just wanted to say Obsidian's behind y'all. Yep, you bet. Have a good one. Enjoy hey, so, You too. You guys have a happy Easter. Don't let this beat you up too much. I know it's Don't so worry. easy to... Surprise is annoying. Yeah, exactly. We just keep, so, we just keep going. Yeah, hey, so, exactly. All right, uh, get after it, Sphere and community. You guys do well. Cheers, man. Thank you so much. Cheers. Hi, Sim. Uh, let yeah. me also get into like just like one thing about it. You know, um, there's just like... You know, some people are saying like, you know... Um, no, let me let me start uh, on another way. Why panic selling happens, you know? Um, let me get into this first because panic selling happens, and that means if, for example, you have like one thousand euro, uh, yeah, euros, dollars, whatever. So, and you saved it, right? It costs you maybe I don't know a year to save the one thousand dollars. So what you want to do now is, of course, you say you I don't need it for any stuff, so I want to invest it. The first thing is you have to understand is there are like low risk uh investments that means like an etf or something that gives you just five 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 to ten percent a year so that means your money is almost safe but you get less percentage and then you have like high risk and very high risk and so on um panic selling happens because some people take the one thousand all that's all the money they saved even more and put it like in a project where they see the price is rising and they think like oh my god i'm gonna 10x my money and then I have like, you know, I, I almost spent one year for it, working for it. And now in a short time, I can make a 10x. When this not happen, this is a panic sell because the people become nervous. And as you see the comments, sometimes I'm typing in, it's like, people, calm down. We don't want to have this project like it's not like a flash and a pen, right? We want to have a grow. We want to grow steady and we want to grow, you know, with also some corrections. And we want to go up, down, up, but at least we want to go up. So panic selling happen because people put money in there. They just like want, you know, have a big uh, chunk of the tar and they put too much money in and then they freak out when the price drops. So for me, it's very important. And I say it always, you know, put just, if you, if all your savings, just like 1K, don't put 1K in, put like one or 200 because then you can say, you know, when it drops, it 
you know, it 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 doesn't affect me because it's okay and I can handle that. And even maybe I make one one k of the two hundred, and then it's okay. But don't be like you know in your mind like doing the the mistake like a lot of people are doing when they come uh, in the crypto market. Also, I did the mistake myself when I was younger. I did also some stupid stuff. Don't do it like that way, okay? Because we all are affected by those thinkings and those uh, uh, people also uh, when people do it like right because when a panic sale happens like you know you see you, you saw it like today also people are selling 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 that's not the way how it works so um you know i'm not the guy and also sim knows like i'm not the guy who just like you know pump the price pump the price and like go up and we are so strong and you know i don't even like those projects before when people are just like you know um, make a cult of it and go inside and you know say pump the price and yeah yeah pump it pump it pump it and then when the price goes down the same people are yelling oh my god why 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 so this is not not the way how it works let's grow you know steady and you know yeah. in a good way that's very important for us also as a team so even when we sometimes say things like an announcement you know uh, everything under 15 cent is fat that's even like we're joking also. Of course, we believe in it. It will become even more, but not not tomorrow, not in two days. We want to we want to aim it and you know catch it, but not like in a very very fast way because the brightest cam ca candle burns half as long. That's always the thing. So yeah, that's was just the thing I want to say also. That thank you, DVK. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate each and everyone taking their time on the stage. Um, I saw the questions. I'm going to answer these questions um, in, in the MA channel. No worries. Uh, but I want to go back <laughs> to the chart and explain how the APY will work now. Um, so right now, we are actually building multiple different uh, you know, dashboards and stuff like that. We are working with the same team that created the Olympus DAO dashboard, if you haven't seen that. We want to have a similar one because we are very, very investment-centric. Um, and we're going to be talking about some numbers that we did in the dashboard. I'm going to be posting a link so you can actually see what is happening. And um, yeah, so basically, if we would have the perpetual APY right now, what happens is when a lot of people buy, um, the APY goes down because you would be making money anyway, right? Um, because of the price going up. But what happens if more people sell? Uh, I, I will post a second picture that you can take a look here in the, in the chat is um, we are going to be aiming for the perpetual APY and say um, how how the protocol actually work works when you know we generate one million dollars so with a fixed APY let's say the APY is 99,000 technically because you know everyone's receiving the same amount of tokens and it's hyperinflationary everyone quote-unquote receives one million dollars but the issue with that is, of course, you know, when people then sell, the first one who sells is going to make the most money. And because he has so many freaking tokens and the protocol only generated 1 million, he technically could dump the price by himself, right? So what happens now is that every, you know, all the other people are going to be holding a very big loss. Because technically, the APY, you know, emits tokens worth $8 million dollars. But you only have one million dollars made, right? So the other seven million dollars are not there. You can't, you know, bring them out of thin air. So what? How the perpetual APY is working is with proper distribution. And for simplicity's sake, of course, we said everyone has the same bag. But you know, the bigger your bag, the more you know you're going to be receiving in rebases. Is that everyone technically then receives the amount of rebases that equates to one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars? So each and every investor is actually making the money. That you know th that is actually based on how the protocol is ge generating revenue. So the thing is, uh, with a fixed APY, a lot of people are making a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of tokens, and you know the the first ones to sell are going to be making the money, but the remaining are you know going to be holding that big bag because of the inflation. Like I said, one million dollars generated, but you then say, okay, we made eight million. So how are you going to be making that seven million that you know you you, you quote unquote emissioned out there? So you know. The first one's going to be holding the bag, you know, making the bank, and the rest is going to holding the bag. So what we said is, we want to actually adjust to what we are making, you know, protocol-wise. The money, the the revenue that we make protocol-wise, is how we are generating money. This is how it works, right? Uh, and that is why we say uh, we rather have an APY based 
on how much money is being made by the protocol to actually, you know, provide the liquidity to each and every investor. Uh, back to the picture above that I posted. I'm going to ping it once more. So you, you see what I mean? Uh, basically, what that basically, mean, uh, basically what that basically means is um, a lot of buys will cause a lesser APY because, you know, we don't have to emit so many tokens because these tokens, quote unquote, mean money. And if you have a lot of buys, you know, the pie that you saw above is getting smaller because more and more people are partaking in that pie, right? But when a lot of people sell, that pie remains, right? Because we're saying we're making a million dollar anyway, you know, and if it's 10 people holding, it's $100,000 each. And if it's two, uh, five people holding, it's $200,000 each. And this is fair, right? Uh, but if you say, okay, a thousand people are holding and making a million dollars and 10,000 people are holding and making a million dollars, that is not feasible. And that is what we said with a sustainable APY is actually an APY that is backed by money made in the treasury. You can't say we're making this and that amount of money when there is, you know, actual money to be made, right? <clears throat> so uh, I hope that made sense. So now let's, let's deep dive. How actually, and this is the question, right? How does, how do you, the investor, you know, benefit from this? So for example, a lot of people ask about buybacks. This is something we are planning to do, be doing in the future. And this is why you saw this little chart, right? That you guys met NFTs of is current during the inflation phase that we have, um, buybacks is only a temporary solution, right? The price goes up and people are selling and then inflation happens nonetheless. What we want to do is we want to accumulate the entire treasury right now and build the treasury and have gradual buybacks from time to time to pump up the price. But the majority is to build this massive treasury, have all these different revenue streams, build the treasury and then stop the APY completely and become something like the Bitcoin of DeFi. And the difference is between, you know, uh, what, what, what Bitcoin has is basically the price of Bitcoin is decided by, you know, people holding the token and buying it, right? But what we want to build with Sphere is a massive treasury that is the biggest buyer of the sphere token so the sphere token is going to be always bought by the treasury and that basically means we will have constant buy pressure and the longer you hold the higher the price of the token becomes because it becomes becomes completely deflationary and this is the long-term goal so basically um the next thing is um basically the next thing is what we are currently working on my discord froze oh, okay sorry uh the the next thing is we just want to build a lot of different revenue streams and then we can decide as the community demands if they say okay we want to make a buyback now we are going to be making a buyback now uh we will be saying okay we want to build 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 the treasury grow the treasury and of course because the treasury is building and the market sees okay the treasury this is a massive treasury it's a big project people are going to be buying to have a part of the treasury and when the defl inflation with the rebases, you know, one day stop and we start making money by not having re more tokens. But basically what you currently do is accumulate a lot of tokens that down the line are going to become even more worth when there is less tokens being printed, right? So that is the thing. If you hold, you hold it now and, you know, less and less tokens, basically the treasury is going to be sucking up the tokens around you and your token becomes more and more worth. So yeah, there will be a maximum supply if uh, one, once the rebase stops. So this is how it works, right? Currently, we want to transition to a rebasing model that actually is backed by something. It's not just a number randomly, you know, drawn out of thin air. Um, yeah, this is how the API is going to be expected to be working. Right now, thanks to the buy pressure and thanks to the sell pressure that we had, we accumulated a lot of money into the treasury and then with that money, we can start working and building that treasury. Awesome. I'm going to go through a few questions before I talk about the second item. Okay, I talk about the, will there be multiple for all the protocols? So how will the treasury benefit investors? Like I said, we can do buybacks with the profits that we make, even if we are rebasing. It's not as effective as when we go deflationary, but of course we can do that. Um, would there be multiple tokens for all the protocols? And please go to the AMA question channel. I'm going to ping the questions I'm answering right now. Is um, 
would there be multiple tokens? Yes, Dystopia has these are own projects that are I you know part of Sphere's ecosystem. Dystopia and Penrose and Teto has its own tokens. And Dystopia and Penrose will actually help by providing money towards Sphere thanks to us holding uh, a, a, a big chunk of Dystopia and Penrose. What about the abrupt sell tax exchange that disabled the tax bracket? Uh, yeah, so we, we kindly could have enabled the tax bracket, but um, now thanks to the sell pressure that happened, the massive sell pressure, everyone went down from the tax bracket. So the idea of the tax bracket is the more people buy, the higher the previous investors become, and thus they sell to lower their own tax bracket, keeping the price a bit lower so new investors can buy at a lower price. But when everyone sells, everyone is, the liquidity pool is going to have way more tokens, and therefore the tax bracket is then less effective. Uh, how do we address the massive sales going on right now? This is an indicator of investor trust failing. Sim and the team may be doing everything legitimately, but that is not relevant or even important if the general investor has no trust. Um, I guess this AMA is basically saying, hey, we are here, we are working, we are not leaving, we are not running away. We saw the sell pressure happen, we saw uh, big, big red candles, but we kept working, right? We we never, you know, went away. I never left the chat, I never did anything. I kept, I stayed here and talked to each and every investor and told him my opinion, uh, uh, how the project is working. And, you know, I have been transparent the entire time. Uh, I don't know what else I can do to, you know, uh, provide more invest uh, trust to the investor. Uh, uh, was a misunderstanding? It was three hours long. It was maybe too complicated. Yeah, so basically we are going to be coming forward. We want to make the uh, AMAs smaller. We are going to be having APY, AMAs, AMA, Galaxy Marketplace and AMA. Dystopian AMA and Penrose and AMA in the future, in the coming weeks, and maybe in the coming days, um, we're going to have each and every one, uh, each and every project product have its own AMA coming forward. Um, So what is the difference between Obsidian Council and Assure it's worthless five projects in the last we went off with nothing happens? Um, yeah, they have our identity. Assure is not KYC themselves publicly, I guess. Uh, Obsidian Council has our data. And if you believe okay, Obsidian Council is no different, also Certic has it. Oh, the project uh, started with, yes? Yeah, uh, someone asked if we could make like a video what you are try to tell what happened like in the next uh updates um let me say something to it so um like uh, we are basically working on a video that you know um will come to our uh, main page so people understand what sphere is but the problem is um i would love to make a video about the next uh, like like to to create a lot like yeah to to uh to create a video about the next update but the problem is it sometimes takes three to four weeks until the video is done because it, had to be, it has to be animated. We have like a guy in, in overseas, but it takes some time and it's not possible to make it faster. So just keep in mind, you know, um, I talked also to Sim, uh, we will do everything to make it more understandable, like an easy way for the future AMAs, but we can't make a video about it because it takes too much time. Until the video is done, we have like the next update. So that's the problem, just to want to say it. Yeah, but of course we will be working on trying to improve that um, um, speed, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, let me see. Um, because I don't want to eat too much of everyone's time. It's, um, you know, Easter Sunday. Multiple people are with their family. Um, I appreciate everyone is got, you guys say. Um, so yeah, one more thing about the high API. It's... Um, if you look at different projects, everyone starts with a high APY because, like I said, in the beginning, it's very easy to 5x, 10x because the market cap is so slow. But as you grow, you can't have a project at a billion dollar market cap to make a 10x or a thousand x, right? Because of the APY, you can't have a 300, 500 million dollar market cap project to 10x in a year because it's very, very hard when you are bigger and bigger to actually sustain uh, the growth. To, to, to be the same pace, right? So that is the thing. I got another question that might be interesting. Someone will ask, in the future, when there is no rebasing, um, there would be no passive income potential? 
No, so basically the passive income potential that you have is then the price of your sphere always going up because you will have a multiple hundred million dollar treasury buying the sphere token and burning that. So basically then you can always sell a chunk of your sphere and have that passive income, right? Similarly to what you have now, similarly to holding Bitcoin, Bitcoin is going to go up in price. But with the difference is that you will always have someone guaranteed buying the spear token. Plus, when it's deflationary and more tokens get burned, the price will inevitably go up, similarly to the S&P 500, right? And then you can sell a part of your sphere to always um, go up. I think it's uh, the easy way to understand this. Um, like, now you're getting some... And like you know, if I talk shit, some just uh, just uh, intro, but like you now you're getting some rebase sphere, right? And like after a while, you um th like the sphere tokens are get burned, so they are not there. There are not more tokens coming on the market, and from the burning, the price is rising up, of course, because you have like inflation and you have deflation. So that's what it costs. So uh, and what it means is um you can. You will not have like the same uh, income as now as there's like, you know, um, how to say a, a daily uh, rebase, but your price is always, always uh, raising all the time. So you can just like sell uh, daily if you want, or I don't know, uh, every month uh, as you want, and you will make also uh, uh, money out of it. So we will, it, there will never, never be a time where uh, there's no rebase to say it in an easy way, just the reverse. I hope everybody understands what I mean. So yeah, um, well, my question question is, as a business leader, yeah, I had a few own projects that I have led. Of course, you know, um, Sphere is currently my biggest one, half a, a quarter billion dollar market cap project that was until now my biggest project that I have led. That is what I can say. I used to work in banks. I worked with uh, IT companies before and yeah. I had that as a previous experience with a venture capital. You have uh, to aid to my experience. We have Tattoo, we have Polygon, we have different VC companies talking with us and actually planning with us moving the money because one thing that I know and everyone in the team knows is uh, moving a million is harder than moving a hundred million is harder than moving a billion, right? Uh, sorry, it's uh, the more money you have, it's harder to move. And we are actually reaching out to different VC companies and polling on themselves to actually aid us with that and have more and more professional teams working with us uh, on how to move the money of you and of the investors of course we we are not gods that know everything and of course we always have more and more people you know partaking into this only question is how did you get to stop it talk to you <laughs> um yeah Yes, we still have the ownership of the contract. That is, of course, because this is how we can actually trigger the rebase, how we can set the APY, how we can um, trigger a swap so the contract can sell and stuff like that. We need to have uh, ownership of the contract. Of course, the uh, uh, you know you can see the risks that, of course, comes in with us owning the ownership of the contract. We have made sure that the contract, ha you know, we have the least power over the contract and therefore, you know, we can't set the taxes to, to unreasonable levels and stuff like that. But we, of course, need the ownership of the contract for that to actually, you know, utilize. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I'm not going to answer questions about other projects. Uh, Sim, can you explain better how curve was take place on Polygon and the taking it cross chain will benefit the sphere market cap? Also, can you do mark targeted marketing at curve level investors rather than for counting degens? It's time to shift our audience from degens to smart money. So yeah, um, basically you can take a look at how big curve and convex is. The accumulative market cap is at a forty billion. Um, and yeah, we actually work. Uh, with Polygon and, like I said, Teraduna, Frax, and Chidaro as of now, on um, actually, you know, start a project 
and start an ecosystem that may compete with them in the future. And basically how Curve Wars work is you are having the token uh, uh, that you can lock in for four years, and then you can dictate where emissions go. And because you can say, okay, I want this pool to have more emissions, everyone is going to put their money into that pool so they can earn more money, right? And this is how these Curve Wars start. So a lot of big companies, big projects, big protocols, however you want to say, are going to be paying a lot of money for your pool, their own pool to be actually, you know, emissioned and utilized. And this is where, you know, we as Sphere make money is because we are getting bribed that way. They're saying, you know, we're paying $100,000 for you, you know, to put your liquidity there. Uh, what's the time frame for the API to be removed? Sorry, I joined late. The API is not going to be removed soon. Um, if it's, it's going to happen, uh, we will, of course, announce that. And we're going to be, you know, having the community decide upon that. Um, and, you know, we are going to say why we want to have it lower to this percentage or we want, why you want to increase it or why you want to, you know, stop the API now uh, and move the deflationary road where, you know, you hold Sphere like you hold Bitcoin and it goes up in value. So this is, of course, you know, this is in the future. Right now we have our 1.91%. Uh, of course, you know, um, if you compound that, it technically goes to 99,100% annually. But um, yeah, so basically we are going to be having that for the next few weeks and if not months, depending on the volume, depending on Penrose and Dystopia, how they launch and how good they launch. Um, and yeah, the APY is not going anywhere anytime soon. And thanks to the taxation system, we can still have a pretty reasonable APY coming forward. Um, As this revolutionary and new project in the crypto world, do you think you could do weekly AMAs to educate and answer questions to all the new people that are entering? A hundred percent. I Now I have learned a valuable lesson is that a lot of people said that to me, but I didn't understand. Um, uh, a lot of people, uh, what, what I did not understand is I expected majority to understand what I was saying, but um, it's very, very complicated um, to, you know, to, 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 to speak about things when you talk about a very, very deep level on things. So yes, we will be having weekly AMAs. Uh, I will try to get maybe someone else who has, a, you know, an easier way to say things, similarly to DVK, for example, or, you know, like Jesse tried to be our translator. Maybe we have Kato, we have anyone in the community who's actually pretty good at that. <laughs> and, you know, the deep stuff is going to be coming from me. Um, yeah. Uh, crypto news, if you want to speak, please raise your hand so I can actually get you on the stage. <laughs> I'm not down. I appreciate you, HZ. I'm I'm not uh, down. Of course, it affects me in a sense. I don't want to see people being sad. It makes me sad. But I know, of course, people you know tend to be sad because the price goes down. But yeah, no, I'm building. I'm building. I'm building. Um, the price, like I said, is noise. We are building literally the next generation of DeFi. <laughs> the price is currently just noise. Of course, you know what saddens me personally is that I see a lot of people frustrated, but you know, I'm trying my best to keep going and I believe in the long term of the project. And like I said, we are not going anywhere and we are going to keep hustling. Um, I'm looking right now because one person wanted to speak actually who is a valuable community member. And I think it's always very nice, you know, to have people speak a bit um, and, you know, partake in the conversation and, you know, Maybe have some other voices except for my angelic voice um, talking. So yeah, let me look at the chat more. Sim, what is your strategy to compete and win against Curve? Basically, we want to build and improve upon all the other previous projects. Uh, this is not something you can say we're going to be beat Curve in uh, uh, in a year. Or so, like I said, they, their ecosystem is forty billion big. Let's first, you know, grow, uh, look at our own plate, how we can see and build the protocol's longevity first and improve that uh, rather than, you know, trying to fight a war uh, that we are most certainly not ready with. We want to first build ourselves, 
have solid fundamentals and then we keep going. Yeah, the project is very, very, very complex to understand. I'm very, very sorry that, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's sometimes hard for me to speak um, about things, but we will keep going. Yes, we. I will actually believe. Uh, and well, sorry, I just read the text, and <laughs> we believe in you. No, I, I. We will actually. I will try to get someone as well to speak on my behalf. Not that I'm not here, but someone who actually you know sits down with me. We actually have a Disney writer, shout out to Nier, who's writing scripts for me for the AMA. So he dumbs down what I say, <laughs> which is sometimes still pretty hard to do. Um, but basically, what we will try to have someone like Austin or someone like Jesse, right, sit down and speak to you, the community, and try to, you know, say the words that I want to say in a way better way. Um, there's also a, a thing for me. I spoke to uh, to Sim today. It's also, um, like, it's not a the very important thing, but, like, you know, I just want to say it. You know, I, um, I like the cold about Sim, right? <laughs> I like it. And I mean, it's it's just fair because he knows like a lot, and he is who he is. But like, uh, what we don't want, and we both agree, Sam and I, uh, we don't want like a cult about some other people and other projects. Like you know, when he's joining, the people are freaking out, and we want like you know, it's okay to to have respect of him, what he's doing. We all do, and we all say you know, um, he's crazy about things, you know. But like, um. Let's not try to make like a, a stupid cult of it, right? So like, it's okay like to believe in in him and what the team is doing all because Sphere is like, of course he's the head, but they are like a, like a lot of people doing great jobs, even like the mods, the mod leaders, 100%. everyone like doing 100%. great and and like you know uh, just keep this in mind. We want to be a very very um, good project, and we want to be a solid project. We don't want to, we want we don't want to be a cult. It's always like you know I like the fun I like the memes. Don't get me wrong, and it's you know it's 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 nice and funny, but like let's keep this like cool headed, right? Like let's keep this like a project we want to grow because the problem is also about other DeFi projects. You know it always feels or no yeah like a lot of things not feel right because of that of the like the cult, right? It's it's just like. You, how to say um they're like just people pumping the price and feel like a dump and pump thing and we don't want it like that we just just want to be a very very serious project so the funds we made should be fun but yeah just want to say that i literally i hope someone is recording i literally forgot i just remembered i didn't start recording Please. uh someone will not ask uh, to record now it's too late. I hope someone recorded. Please tell me someone recorded. <laughs> also, many other. Uh, we recorded most of it, but there's also a member who was recording from the very beginning. Also, so shout yeah, out to him. Crazy. <laughs> I'm Please DM me, by the way. Yeah, I need yeah. that audio. Okay. <laughs> okay. Repeat everything. Okay, guys. No, I'm just kidding. Um. Yeah. Uh, crypto news. Uh, I think we're going to start slowly wrapping this up. If you want to say something, you're very, very welcome. Thank you for your videos uh, that you have done so far on Sphere. I appreciate you uh, doing that. Uh, thank you so much. Um, well, let me just uh, help out here a little bit. Uh, first of all, the AMA that you guys did uh, two days ago, or was it yesterday, I can't remember. Um, I think if the perpetual APY was uh, right at the end, and I'll explain why, because perpetually uh, apy was based on whatever you said later on because yeah. the whole point was which a lot of people don't get which is fine for you just to print money like the us with no backup it will end up into inflation we know that that's a fact so most of the DeFi project that we are seeing right now they're just printing till they reach to a point till they figure it out or they crash or they end up just inflationary. Yeah. So what a sim was trying to do, which I thought would be better if it was done all the way around, it was talking yeah. about the kinetic bonding, when he talked about the QLA AIS, all of this will help the APY to become real. That means 
you're getting what the treasury is making. It could be more than 100,000, which people don't understand this part. It could be more than 100,000 if the money comes in from Luna, comes from other protocols, which will fund the treasury by taking either commissions from the QLAS as a service and other, you know, the kinetic bonding, which is recycling the whole process. Not to mention the Bedrosa, the Dystopia. All of this will sustain the APY and it can grow way bigger. But it depends on how many holders do we have. So if we sustain the same number of holders, that means we gain more money. But as more people are coming in because more protocols are you know, pouring in some money, more attractions coming, that means, yes, we are getting less share, but we're getting what we actually deserve it. And the price of the sphere will be deflationary because it's not printing any more fake money. I think it's yeah. clear. No, I got hundred percent. So the the people here, I think the perpetual would be the conclusion of what all these like little components that is part of the sphere, and it's going to build this whole sphere, and the result is how much money we will be earning in real time. And I think maybe there will be backup sometimes for you know security or whatever reasons you might print a little bit just to you know uh, back up the treasury but at the end this is sustainable why because you're getting all this real money from other protocols to use our services for free exactly. we, we, just, we built it once and that's it we just accumulate all this cash all we need to do is get attraction from others i mean a lot of people does underestimate what small project like Paratly can do to the whole ecosystem. If they can bring the cash from corporations to the quantum liquidity alone, that would be insane. And it's a small project, part of this whole ecosystem. It's not part of the sphere or ecosystem, but it's like a bridge that's helping out. Yeah, no, I appreciate you. Yeah, like I said, we are building products that were not in the space before. And that is how we're actually going to be making money. Uh, well, if I say money, uh, because someone pointed it out, it's liquidity, right? Um, not actual fiat, but let's say use this and stuff like that. Or, you know, whatever native token we're using, and then we can use that native token, liquidate that, and then buy the tokens. I tried to say it in simple terms, and then <laughs> I have probably said it uh, too simple in that sense. But anyhow, thank you very much, Crypto News. Uh, I appreciate you taking your time and, and talking in. So yeah, um, I think we're going to wrap this up. Uh, in the coming days, um, we're going to be talking about the Galaxy Marketplace. Please look in the main chat. I'm going to show you uh, the beta image that we're currently working on. Uh, I actually wanted to create all these different images, you know, in the sphere design. Um, but, you know, like we needed that imprint to AMA, SAP. And um, that's why I showed you the, the, the flowcharts uh, and, you know, the, you know, the solid no work um thing so i'm going to show you what the galaxy marketplace is going to be looking like in a very simple way you can look it in the main chat right now it's very very oversimplified um you can see uh i'm just going to be very very fast whales can sell their sphere at a discounted tax users then can pay a lesser tax to get into this fee ecosystem we make profits from both ends uh currently projected around 124 percent with these numbers and with that money that we make in profits in the treasury, we can then start using into quantum liquidity and make even more money. So you're going to have multiple, many, 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 many revenue streams inside of the protocol that actually helps sustain the protocol's longevity. Uh, one more thing I wanted to also talk about the progress that is being done in the background and how you as a community can actually also help sphere the long in the long term we have uh, uh kato here who actually is building the sphere wiki uh which is very very nice because we also have a secondary page basically now that you know is everything sphere that is not directly needed on the website in a sense that we don't want to over cluster our website but if you want to you know dig deeper in, in the sphere ecosystem because like you have seen today we have so much coming forward so much going on, all that stuff, massive, right? 
uh, uh, working with Terra Luna, working with Frax, working with Chidao. Like these projects know what we are building and they're believing into this, uh, uh, into the vision of Dystopia and Penrose and ultimately of Sphere and Tattoo, since we are also working together. Um, there's a lot of coming coming forward and we have Kato here who can uh, uh, create different pages on, on the wiki and yeah, uh, Kato, the stage is yours. We can't hear you, by the way. <laughs> Maybe rejoin. Uh, let me check his permissions. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Like yeah. I'll, no, I was on push talk, it's all good. Oh. Yeah, just really quickly, I don't want to take up people's time, um, but with the wiki, I've had a bunch of people uh, approach me and they want to help out. I've had React devs approach me, uh, article writers, content creators approach me. Um, so we're forming a little wiki team um, to try and alleviate some of the... Um, documentation pressure from the 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 course fair team because I'm, essentially people are like why aren't the docs updated yet with the games or whatever the team is moving so fast and building so much new stuff that it's almost impossible for them to keep an updated um documentation of, of all these new con like they're, they're explaining it as soon as they're coming up with it in these amas um so yeah, we're gonna have a whole team of people that are just gonna be, it's all community stuff. No one's like official Sphere team. This is all just community stuff. Um, but we're gonna be putting up loads of content. The wiki's gonna be getting a whole overhaul um, and we'll try and have all these new concepts kind of <laughs> not dumbed down, but in a non-SIM uh, IQ way so that the average person can understand it. Cause like, as Sim says, this is truly revolutionary stuff and there's, like the average person can't be expected to understand revolutionary stuff because it's revolutionary. Um, so it's going to take us all a bit of time to get our head around it, but hopefully uh, that feature can help alleviate some of, some of that stress and make stuff easier to understand. So that's it for me. Yeah, and in the hey. meantime, I am working on the docs with a number of people in a way that it can be properly delivered as an official news source. So in the meantime, the Sphere Wiki is the auxiliary, uh, the auxiliary source of information. It is still valid, but we we are working on making an official Sphere Finance uh, documentation on our own. So feel free to take the Sphere Wiki as a source of info while we are working on it ourselves yeah uh yeah um kato i think it's you know about time maybe we for us to make the wiki public source on github for people maybe to contribute themselves um yeah we are currently reconstructing the github uh sorry the wiki with kato so we can actually move the infrastructure of the wiki to be also hosted completely by Cloudflare and have the wiki distributed to over 250 cities all over the world. Uh, so each and everyone can access the wiki uh, with the lowest latency possible. Similarly to our Sphere website, we have over a million views, uh, you know, uh, a million refreshes on our website uh, daily. And, you know, you can always access our website without any lags. And we want to make the wiki have the same power as our main website has anyhow i think i'm gonna wrap this up for today um the mods sim can i hop in for a second no no i'm just kidding <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> yeah no so like <clears throat> the last ama i got a lot of messages people wondering if i had died no i'm here i'm fine my uh, my mic wasn't working and i didn't know but anywho today we're all here for other reasons um, i just want to say kato thank you for helping um, like you said we're iterating so quickly and we're still a relatively small team. And so we're really, we're, we're focusing super hard on providing tons of value to all our sphere holders and making sphere viable project for the future. So um, we appreciate everyone who is here, who's still invested in sphere, who is excited about the future, because like Sim was saying, we, we literally haven't stopped today. We've been fixing bugs. We're shipping features. We're working on partnerships. Um, this is just part of our journey and we're not, we're not slowing down. So um, look forward to like all the things that we've said are on our own map. They still are. We're working on them. We haven't stopped. Updates are coming and more features are coming. And like Sphere really is just getting started. 
So one more thing. Yeah, just um, just small thing in between. Uh, maybe it's also like nice for you to uh, for for you guys to know, and we will make this maybe in a future. Amy, whatever, Amy, whatever. Um, how uh, we build up the whole team and how we work on things that might like a lot of people ask me this. Um, how the structure works. So um, yeah, we can also give some details about it. So that will also give you a nice feeling how everything works because um, I'm like well, like my job is to structure like things like in a company, and we build it up so nicely and like so steady so yeah just like a shot for you guys yeah. I don't know and one more thing um now that we had this massive sell event and the buy event um and, and you can see the taxes work is that you know roughly a million dollars roughly in the past 24 hours have been accumulated in taxes from people selling and buying uh the tokenomics still work and we keep working today Yes, uh, like one have said, Booty said, the lesson uh, of the day, don't let emotion take over. Don't invest into a project, and that is why I say, if you don't believe in Sphere's vision, then, you know, don't invest into Sphere. If you think Sphere is a good project, you're very welcome to invest responsibly. Don't put all your bag at once, right? If you have $1,000, what I always say, and this is quote-unquote financial advice, is always to invest responsibly. This is the only advice that I always give. There are multiple ways of investing responsibly. For example, the most prevalent one and the most important one, DCA. Today you put a, you have a thousand dollars put today a hundred, tomorrow a hundred, or in a week a hundred, the day after a hundred, stuff like that, where you have a schedule. Plan your investment. Don't just randomly ape into a project that is very, very important. So you don't buy the top and you know lose your money go fall down by 60 70 80 percent rather you know invest uh, uh, maybe 50 dollars on the top you see corrections you put in a hundred dollars more so your average is always you know plus minus uh uh uh, uh you know rather you, you sit down you say okay uh, you know the, the price is going to climb higher 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 and you invest emotionally and then the price starts correcting itself like it happened um and you make big losses uh make sure that maybe the one or the other person has learned from that mistake and make sure that you invest responsibly and uh, make sure you know to always only invest into a project that you wholeheartedly believe in and you say okay this project has a future and of course you're here to make money so you say okay this project has a future that may make me money you know and, and make sure you do your research and you know always put the invest you know the project into a hot seat the leaders like I said, you can always ask me every question that you may want. I always respond to them. Um, and the very first question that you can always ask is, uh, in another project is how, what do you guys want to solve, right? What is your, what is your goal, right? What, why did you start this project? What do you want to change in the DeFi space? Because it's a DeFi project, right? How do you want to make long-term money? What happens when the hype dies? How do you want to make money, right? These are very, very important factors that you always have to keep in mind when you actually invest. Read the white papers, read the doc docs. Don't just chase YouTubers uh, because they make a video because, you know, that is not how you invest responsibly. Take your, you know, take your sweet time learning things. Don't chase candles because, like DBK said, the biggest, you know, candles uh, burn as uh, half as long. So, yes. Um... I see a lot of people, you know, offering their their, their expertise. We are very, very uh, grateful for each and every one of you. Uh, you can always, you know, suggest maybe talk. Uh, we have different roles in the team. I'm a dev, right? I'm the core dev. Uh, 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 so is Geo and so is Weaver. We're doing dev stuff. Please don't message us for marketing. Uh, if you want to do marketing stuff, you can always mes message uh, Sphere of the Opera. Uh, if you want to have your IUX design, uh, changes you can always message eatups if you want to have changes to the discord we have aquaverse so please message the responsible people if you are not sure open a ticket and the moderators will tell you who to contact and maybe ping them inside the uh, inside the ticket and then we can contact you ah, that is pretty much it today i hope uh, uh we you know alleviated some of the concerns that you guys had uh we are not going anywhere we're gonna keep working uh, we appreciate each and everyone taking their time uh, today. Happy Easter. 
and I'm looking forward to be talking to you in the main chat. I'm going to open it now. Please don't spam, even though I said that uh, it, it's going to happen. I'm going to be opening it now, and I'm going to shut down this call. And I'm looking forward to be talking to you guys in the chat. I'm going to be eating. I'm going to eat first now because uh, I didn't break my fast, <laughs> and I should be allowed to be eating uh, since an hour, uh, and I didn't yet. So yeah, I'm going to be eating first, and then I'm going to be joining you guys in the chat. Uh, and developing at the same time and everyone else have an awesome day uh, evening morning whatever and i'm looking forward for the next ama bye guys thank you so much well yes thanks Zim and team for the urgent update about sphere finance and i wish you also a happy easter see you next time chris